Whether it be researchers, clinicians, SIBO experts, or online forums, everybody and their brother is going to tell you that SIBO is hard to treat. But just because everybody's saying it, does that mean it's actually true? And does that make it true for you as an individual? Well, in this video, I'm going to share why I think SIBO is not difficult to treat. As a matter of fact, I think SIBO can be quite easy to deal with if you let it be. Now, at this point, you might be understandably skeptical. You might be thinking, all right, lady, sure, everybody else says the same thing and you're the lone wolf and you're the one who's right and they're all wrong, sure, whatever. But honest to God, I get good results with my SIBO clients and frankly, nobody else minus my podcast co-host Amy seems to be capable of doing that. So what's the rub? Why do I get great results with this difficult to treat condition and why do my patients go years and years never relapsing while everybody else in the industry seems to follow the same pattern? Well, to answer that question more effectively, I'm gonna branch this out a little bit and we're gonna explore the three main reasons why people claim that SIBO is difficult to treat. Ready? So first and foremost, let's give us a little arrow under this guy. The first reason that I see frequently cited is that SIBO is a relapsing condition. It relapses. Even if you treat it, it just comes back, right? Whether it be weeks or months or years later, the SIBO is going to come back. Once you pop the fun, don't stop. And therefore, that is part of why this is really hard to treat. But here's the thing, SIBO doesn't have to relapse. And again, I just said my clients and my students go years and years never relapsing. So again, what's the rub? Why is everybody else relapsing with SIBO, but not my folks? Well, there's a couple of reasons underneath this umbrella, and I'm going to do a full video about SIBO relapse after this one posts. But one of the big things that I see is when people say, oh, I relapsed within weeks or months of treating the SIBO, to me, that directly translates to, oh, you didn't treat it very well, now did you? And what usually happens, again, there are like a million little sub bullet points under this, but what usually happens is that people get diagnosed with SIBO and that they and their practitioner laser in on the SIBO like nothing else matters, right? Sleep, nutrition, vitamins and minerals, health and happiness be damned. We just have to kill the SIBO and that's all that matters in this world anymore. And here's the thing, this makes us really hypocritical, I think whether it be a functional doctor or whoever that's doing this with you, you're being a dang hypocrite if you are only focusing on the SIBO at the detriment of the rest of your body. This is the same kind of crap that we give conventional medicine doctors for. Oh, I can't believe the neurologist doesn't understand the importance of gut health. Or, oh, I can't believe the GI doctor doesn't understand the importance of hormones. Oh, if only they were more holistic. Well, okay, but your naturopath and your functional doctor are doing the same damn thing. They will give you the illusion of holisticness. They will give you a holistic intake process on the first day. But then what happens when you get diagnosed with leaky gut or SIBO or candida? Everything else goes out the window and they laser in on the dang gut the same way the conventional medicine people would. So to give away part of the magic of the next video in the series, the best way to prevent SIBO relapse is to zoom out and not hyper-focus on the damn SIBO anymore. And again, I know that's easier said than done at this point. That's why it's going to have its own separate video. But that is kind of the crux of the matter over here. The fact that SIBO relapses to me does not mean it's hard to treat. It just means that your treatments sucked or were inadequate. Now, let's go over to the other side of this equation. The second main reason that people cite SIBO as being difficult to treat is... I've tried a million different things and I can't seem to treat it. And now there's a sub, two subcategories under here as well, right? Like I've struggled for so long. I've tried a million things and I just can't seem to treat the damn thing. And this is judged by one of two things. A, I've done the SIBO treatment. I did elemental, I did Zyfaxin, I did whatever. And I take the test again, and it comes back positive yet again. The SIBO is still with me. Well, this is the easiest one out of the three to debunk. The problem here is not that SIBO is difficult to treat. The problem is that we're using shitty tests. These tests suck really badly. And I don't know how else to scream it from the rooftops to get people to believe me. 
other than continually here, saying it here on YouTube and my podcast. But guys, you have to understand, SIBO breath testing is borderline useless to a point where I have not ordered a single SIBO breath test in years because they are that bad and that useless. And frankly, I don't need a SIBO breath test to inform my clinical decision-making, if I'm being honest. I have videos on this, and quite frankly, they are some of my least popular, least viewed episodes on this channel, but there's a video right here on this channel titled False Positives with Lactulose SIBO Breath Testing, and another one titled False Positives with Glucose Breath Testing. And in that, I talk about the research that shows lactulose, based breath testing is going to give you about an 88% false positive rate. And glucose is going to give you about a 50% false positive rate. What that translates to in real life human being terms is that if we had a room of 100 people, all of whom tested positive for SIBO using a lactulose test, 88 of those 100 people actually do not have SIBO. They were incorrectly told that they have SIBO. And then guess what? They embark on all of these SIBO treatments and their breath test remains positive because it's a shitty test. And then boom, here we are saying, man, this is a really hard case to treat. Bummer. Similarly, glucose. If we had 100 of you in a room who all tested positive for, glu for SIBO using a glucose-based test, 50 of you would actually not have SIBO and it would have been a false positive. Again, go watch the videos on this channel documenting this. I'm not making this stuff up, but we have to stop relying on these crappy, crappy tests. And the thing is, the hard thing is that there's no better option available right now to do at home. Shy of going in and getting an aspirate study done, which is not very doable for most of you, we don't have anything better than this. So I'm just in this weird kind of predicament where I really just don't test for SIBO that often. It is what it is. Now, so here's, okay. So for the folks who say, I've tried a million treatments and I can't seem to treat the damn thing. Number one, they're basing this assumption off of the testing, which again is erroneous at best, garbage at worst. The other flavor of this is I've done a million treatments and I don't feel better. My symptoms persist. And this could be a couple of different reasons. Again, similar to this, maybe you just didn't treat it adequately or correctly. A lot of us are chasing SIBO, this idea of overgrowth, the idea of the bad guys being overgrown, when in actuality, we need to be treating something called SIMD, S-I-M-D, small intestinal microbial dysbiosis. I have a pinned post on my Instagram if you want to read more about that, by the way. Um, but, you know, maybe you're chasing the wrong goose. Maybe it's not SIBO so much as it is SIMD. Or maybe you never had SIBO in the first place because you were basing this assumption on an erroneous test. Maybe you had something else entirely like dysbiosis, candida, leaky gut, something else, and you just happened to be hooked with the label of SIBO and you've been chasing that goose. And yeah, you don't feel better because you don't have freaking SIBO. If you had iron deficiency anemia and we treated you with chemotherapy, would you actually expect to feel better from that? No because you don't have cancer, you have anemia. You need to treat the thing you actually have if you want to feel better. Treating SIBO when you don't have SIBO is not going to give you a symptomatic benefit. That's just not rocket science. But again, a lot of us get so hooked on these tests and we think that they are telling us the absolute truth that we are blinded and we're not listening to common knowledge and common reasoning and logic. Again, SIBO doesn't have to be hard to treat. I find it to be quite easy to treat when we can release some of this baggage, when we can treat the SIBO, but not at the expense of the rest of the body, and when we can deduce what's going on without over-reliance on testing that is deeply inherently flawed. Again, SIBO can be easy to treat and you can feel better sooner than you realize. You just have to let go of the things that are holding you back. But here's the thing, this is maybe easier said than done, right? I just came on here and nonchalantly told you, just forget everything you know about SIBO. Forget everything you know about slipcovers, if you know the Mitch Hedberg reference. But what happens when you drop everything you've been holding on to? Your hands are empty. So now what? What do you do? A, it might not be that easy to just release everything you've held on to for so long. It's not like dropping markers. 
but also what do you fill your hands with now? Well, this is where something like FODMAP Freedom, my group coaching program could come in pretty freaking handy. In FODMAP Freedom, I could give you the support and the guidance and the tools and the framework you need to finally drop this idea of laser focusing on the SIBO and treating the SIBO. I can show you how to zoom out and treat the body holistically and why things that frankly you think do not matter actually do. I can teach you how to get back to a normal human diet, not just low FODMAP, low carb, low histamine, low oxalate, whatever it is you're doing now. You could eat actual gluten again for all we know, but you don't know until you try. And again, I have found that I get really great results in FODMAP Freedom to a point where I think it's even more effective than my one-on-one -on -one work, which is really bizarre for me to say. But I, just, I can't talk it up enough. It's my baby, so I'm biased. So maybe you're not even listening at this point. But if you are even thinking of moving forward with what may or may not be SIBO, I'd encourage you to check it out. We're actually enrolling right now. So if you go to the link down below, you can check it out. You can learn more. You can book a discovery call with a FODMAP Freedom coach to see if it's the right fit for you and vice versa. Come to FODMAP Freedom. We have so much fun. And again, I'm really helping you lay that foundation so that you can have whole body health and yes, eradicate SIBO if you do have it once and for all. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.